go. Jackson. <laughs> That's the intro. Just go. Go. Hey everyone. Welcome to episode 275 of the official podcast. I'm Jackson. Andrew's here. Charlie and Kaya are also here. Uh we've got a brilliant show designed for you. No flaws, no bugs, nothing out of the ordinary. It's the official podcast. Andrew, what have we got on the docket for today? I actually have two different topics. Jesus um, Christ. I know, I came doubly prepared. I'll go ahead yeah, and start. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll distribute them out. I'll go ahead and start with one that two of us can enjoy because Kaya, I think you have a lot of personal input on this one. I went to a Turkish restaurant yesterday or two days <laughs> ago. Yeah. Very personal on a and, uh, race. I get it. While while I was eating there, I was sending Kaya like photos of my food and telling him what we were getting and talking about it because I thought it was interesting, you know, Turkish restaurant. You just restaurant. had to tell someone. Yeah. I, well, I had to tell the Turkish man about the Turkish restaurant <laughs> and all the Turkish food mm -hmm. I was eating. And uh, mm -hmm. Kaya, Fair. I don't know how you pronounce it. Is it Iran? Iran? Iran. It's Iran. Iran. It's a country, right? That's the mm -hmm. drink, Iran. Iran mm -hmm. might be the grossest thing I've ever drank. <laughs> I thought it was going to be positive. Strong. No, yeah. it's, it is. So it's listed <laughs> on the menu. He just brought this topic up to shit on his culture. <laughs> no, no, no. Everything else was delicious. Everything else there was great. But Iran is listed on the menu as Turkish yogurt drink. And boys, Ew. it is it is a drink it's that's literally salty. All it it's, it's salty and it's so good. Have you? No, it's, it's like so salty to me. So and it tastes like liquid cheese. Oh my god. Mm, I would yeah, never drink anything described so as oh, Turkish no, no, yogurt drink. Why did <laughs> I think you that choose sounds that? good. I think that sounds good. I gave it a try. Yeah, Iran is the most basic drink you can make, and I always recommend this fucking drink to all like my foreign friends that I have. And every single time I recommend it to an American, I realize just how sugared up your brains are because <laughs> apparently when you tell an American So okay, well all Iran is you take half parts yogurt, half parts of water. And you add salt to taste. That's literally it. And you mix it oh, with like a spoon. Yeah, see, that, that sounds is gross, literally it. it. <laughs> Why would you want to drink and something they all salty? Go, oh, so gross. And then I realized, wait a minute, dude. And they go, well, what kind of yogurt, Kaya? Like vanilla or chocolate? And I realized, oh, here we go again. Of course, the Americans don't know that plain yogurt is a thing. <laughs> so then now, I have to spend 10 minutes explaining what Greek yogurt is. Now, see, let me let me give you a counterpoint for me, though. As uh, I think you're familiar, Charlie and I eat plenty of Greek yogurt. Isn't that right, Charlie? Yeah. We I eat tons eat one of it. Greek yogurt a day with chia seeds. Yeah, I love I, Greek I, yogurt. I'm not I am attacking I have, you guys. Uh, I'm telling you my average experience with the like average person okay. that I tell this to. They go right, and and that's all it is. By the way, you can make it as diluted as you like, or as salty or non-salty as you like. And obviously, uh, it'll taste different with like different right. kinds of uh, yogurts. But most people don't try it. They just hear, ew, salt in my drink, yucky. And then they never try it. I fucking love it. It's my favorite mm -hmm. drink. Maybe we have different tastes. That's fair. So I've, I, I, I tried it. I mean, I thought it sounded good. Like I've tried yogurt drinks before. I know there's one from Japan that's really good. I get when I go to like a bocce and shit. So I was like, yeah, I'll is give it a Calpis? go. Cal, uh, Calpis, yeah. Calpis is a yogurt drink. It's really good. Uh, but then again, that one's loaded with sugar. Um, mm -hmm. so I, I saw this, thought I'd try it, and, you know, I went in, I thought I'd like it, but, number one, I don't know how much I like the idea of a salty drink, and number two, the problem with awful. this yogurt, like, mixture, was it was, like, directly in the middle between tasting, like, yogurt and cheese. And I don't know how much I want to drink, like, a liquidy, cheesy drink. It just, it did not at all... Appetizing, yeah, you know. Would well, depend a lot on how much you like cheese, which I love cheese. Yeah, but yeah. Um, but wait, you you like melted cheese though? That's kind of oh, like no, I love like cheese. Yeah, but just drink, drink it. Yeah, I love cheese, just not to drink. What's <laughs> the difference between drinking melted cheese and eating melted? Would you cheese? go to a Seven Eleven and get nacho cheese and just drink it with whatever <laughs> fucking hot dog or bag of chips you get? Like, fuck no. yeah. <laughs> Come on, Jackson. Don't be I would small. drink I melted cheese by the gallon. Melted cheese is the great. Thing is, no, I was was so sleeping. <laughs> I don't really taste it as cheese. I just taste it as a Greek yogurt I've always loved. And I love just plain yogurt. Mm -hmm. And plain yogurt is one of the most diverse things you can use in your dishes. And people don't believe me. And I tell them, I put it in fucking rice. I put it in mac like um, macaroni, just pasta. 
You can put it in salads. I make like sometimes I just mix uh, yogurt salads and everybody turns uh, like looks down at me from their noses until they try and they go, yeah, OK, you know what? This isn't bad. Oh, yeah, I, I could see that being good. I'm not against Again, yogurt and yogurts. foods. I'm not against yogurt and foods at all. It's just the fact it was salty and cheese like made it for not a good drink. That was my complaint. I can see why you'd Salt be, yeah, if you've never yeah. had it before, why it would be well, weird. Well, then why do, uh, I guess for me, why it's do like you, normal. yeah, Kai, why do you like it? Like, what's the, what's the defining feature of it that's good for you? First of all, it, as it's been established in official podcast lore, I'm a whore for salt, too. I like plain <laughs> yogurt. True. Sure. So if you gave me a drink that's literally made out of my two favorite ingredients, and you had a little bit of water, I'm happy. <laughs> would you, I, would you drink melted cheese? Uh, I'm sure. I mean, Kaya fuck, I is love a cheese. big cheese fiend. Do you remember he killed two yeah. tubs of cheese balls when he was here? Oh yeah, I remember I that. Love cheese. Yeah. They lived under his arm as he walked around your house. He would literally it, it, not stop eating cheese balls. He was like that kid in that fucking Hey Arnold <laughs> that loved chocolate. <laughs> yeah. Constantly with like Cheeto puff on my fingers. Yeah, yeah. dude. I like for me a valid. A block of cheese is a valid snack, and I will not be judged for it, lest you be judged. I don't care, I'm with bro. I'm with you there, too, man. I love cheese. I love melted cheese. I love every ch kind of cheese, from hard cheese to soft to, like, exquisite to what the fuck ever. It's just, as Absolutely. a drink with dinner, it didn't work for me. <laughs> didn't do it. I like... I like cheese as like an addition to something like you know like yeah, ta like same. exactly across the tacos yeah. or something or the a, only cheese know. I can like consider a, a meal or a snack is um, cottage cheese. Cottage cheese I think is like a really nice complete snack. Mm -hmm. mm, I'll take any. I don't care. Mm -hmm. Have you guys? So, okay, speaking of weird drinks, then have you guys ever heard of shalgam, which is no. also from no. the region of like Turkish Turkey and its neighboring countries? All it is is like black carrots and turnips and it's Ooh. black carrot and turnip juice essentially and i think they ferment it a little it's so i don't know how i would describe the taste other than like vinegary but it's so good fuck me mm. see i'd try that what why that sounds like just you gotta salt be tasting you gotta be open-minded though jackson i mean yeah it might be it might just work better it might complement better i don't know i'm down to no, try I, i'm any fine food. with trying it but i'm surprised yeah. that you would considering that you don't like salted drink food uh, I, drinks I, no. it's it's more i didn't like the idea of i ordered a yogurt drink assumed it would be kind of <laughs> sweet kind of milky and instead i got salty cheese in a cup oh, you see know? you, you wanted a the milkshake there's yeah, the american you got me there's the you american <laughs> You got me. <laughs> it didn't well, even I mean, have chocolate to, chips in it. <laughs> look, to, to be fair to me, to be fair to me, you go to an American restaurant and you get like something with yogurt, you're going to expect like frozen yogurt, like a milkshake. You go to a, yeah, an Asian or Korean yeah, restaurant, enough. you get a yogurt drink, you're going to get like Calpis or something like Turkish really sugary. Right? Yeah. And then you Why go, to, you a go to a Turkish restaurant. restaurant and expecting American. I expe stuff. Well, I expected something similar, but it turns out it was super different. I, I'm not complaining against the drink. Like, I'm yeah, sure a no, lot of people there you. like you it. You also went to a I bad place, didn't. though, bro, because I ask you the question that any Turk will know what I'm talking about is, um, mm -hmm. okay, so you went to a Turkish restaurant. Did they have a dedicated waiter with a boiling pot of butter? On no, and, 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 after, no. <laughs> and after I looked it up, I was disappointed because that looked fucking cool. No, they it didn't have a butter guy. so delicious, and I will put the link in our Discord here, and maybe Danny can put the video up on the screen. All it is, so for those who don't know, you go to a Turkish restaurant where they have the fucking uh, dinner thing. You get your meal, Iskandar, can look different, varying by the restaurant, but then you sit down, and the waiter comes, and he says, butter, sir? And then he says, yeah. And then he just starts pouring boiling butter on your fucking meal, and he keeps <laughs> yeah. going until you tell him stop. Except you so don't, it's like because it's so pepper delicious. Pepper guy. Mm. And I don't, yes, but except way better, because I don't know how the physics of like boiling butter, but for some reason it absorbs perfectly into food. Like it gets really frothy and bubbly, mm -hmm. but it soaks into the meal. So you can have him pour way more than you think the plate could handle, and it's so delicious. Now, Kaya, <sighs> what is the obesity rate in Turkey? Probably Way less than America, I, I assume. But they're pouring boiling like globs of butter and che melted cheese on every to single thing they fair, eat. To be fair, but they do it boiling responsibly. Bu boiling butter is less bad for you than like the sugary shit in America. The sugar oh, yeah. is yeah. Yeah. Oh, for sure. the butter. 
for sure. Uh, well, the sugary shit in America probably also has like butter in it. <laughs> like true. It can't, butter. but it can't be true. good for you either. Is my point. All that butter. Oh yeah, I mean it's yeah. definitely not. But <laughs> like, if we're gonna be comparing <laughs> here, I'd say the sugar is worse. Oh, I'm not saying that you know oh, Turkey yeah. would be anywhere near America, but at the same time, maybe top ten. I don't know. <laughs> like, would be no, anywhere. Apparently, Turkey is. If I'm reading this right, number forty four at twenty five percent obesity. That's pretty good. Even, oh my god, even the US isn't in the top 10. You guys have, according to what? this, 36% obesity. Yeah. You are outdone by Samoa, Tokelau, Federated States of Micronesia, Tonga, Kiribati, Niue, Tuva. All of these fucking island nations. What the fuck? What do uh, they eat? Yeah, what's going on there? They're hoarding the yeah, food. Yeah, they're probably vacation yeah, islands, and it's just a bunch of fat tourists that fucking live there and just go nuts. Maybe. I've I doubt that would be counted in their census, right? Tourists? I doubt tourists would be counted. I don't know, man. The number one country is Nauru, and they've got a 61% obesity rate. Jeez. Yeah, how the hell does that Actually, that's... I did know that. I, I looked that one up not too long ago. It's fucking unbelievable. Yeah, I think we talked about this before, but I forgot. What? Yeah, and their population is only 10,000 people, so I'm willing to guess it's like... <laughs> it's fucking vacation people doing it. Okay, well, wait, if wait, you're wait. speaking of real countries, then I think America is number one. <laughs> no offense to all these islands. <laughs> I heard that Australia was above America in terms of obese people, but I'm not sure how true that was. No. That was a while You're ago, close. too. Mm -hmm. You're at 30. You're hovering around 30 to wow. 31 percent. United yeah. States is at 36 obesity. It's pretty okay. interesting. The United States is definitely in the top, but surrounding them are either island nations or the Middle East. They make up the majority of the other countries up there at the top. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's all that butter. So what Aww. countries have the healthiest cuisines, and what, what would be the healthiest place to... Um, Asian to countries. In? Vietnam, India, Japan, yeah. South Korea. A lot Korea. of rice dishes, yeah. A lot of rice, a lot of lean meats, a lot of fish, a lot of veggies. Oh, yeah, I guess that makes sense. They're mm -hmm. also... Another thing that really helps them is no dairy. Like, uh, yep. Japan in particular, Correct. they don't have any dairy for the most part because most of them are lactose intolerant. Mm hmm They don't use dairy. Yeah, that's it's uh, su super healthy for them. That's why are they lactose tolerant? Intolerant? Because they don't have dairy. That's uh, why right, in the so vast they, they majority. That's why in the vast majority of Japanese restaurants, there's no cheese. Yep. There's you will no not find there's cheese. Very rarely cheese in Japan. Mm hmm So it's like their kryptonite. Is that how we can defeat them? <laughs> Just drop milk can in their us, communities. Can we use this against the Chinese? Like, look, get rid of their nukes. Just have like cheese explosions. <laughs> Give yeah, them all diarrhea. Drop a big chunk of cheese. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I'm lactose intolerant now. I think I've given myself lactose intolerance. Most, pe Me most too. adults are to mm -hmm. a certain degree. Well, what, does it just happen naturally? No, it's it's human. Yeah, it's human standard to be lactose intolerant. It's I think a mutation to not be lactose intolerant. The only reason really most kids bastards. aren't lactose intolerant is because they get so much milk when they're young, so they start getting the enzymes they need for it or some shit like that. Mm. So is it a breast milk thing? That's what you my top advice. <laughs> no, you, your mom's kids? not a fucking cow. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just like most kids have a lot of dairy naturally, like milk builds strong bones and shit so they're just used to like consuming it so their body gets used to it but as yeah, that's you what age, I don't get. how you meant, how are you how are you meant to get strong bones if you're lactose intolerant how are you meant to build your bone strength up <laughs> there's no other way to build your bone strength so that's right that jackson well, milk is milk the only, the only food way. on earth with calcium in it there's nothing else uh you know my tip to all our young listeners enjoy cheese while you can Okay, because it is a privilege that you don't know the value of. I'll, I'll <laughs> promise you that. Yeah, cheese is good. It cheese is, is real good. So Even good. when you're lactose intolerant, though, you can still enjoy cheese. It just comes at a price. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not yeah, going to stop putting cheese on my dishes. Yeah, the price is just I'm too gonna high poop sometimes, anyway. though. <laughs> yeah, may as well oh, just great. eat everything. I'm going to shit regardless. <laughs> Have you guys had uh, a charcuterie board before? Yes. Yes. Many fucking times. Fucking yeah, big fan. Are, those things are fucking cool. I had one for the first time like last week. Or actually, I think it was only like four days ago. I don't know. Really? I, I've yeah, had them yeah. so many times. I'm a yeah. huge fan of charcuterie. 
most events that I've been Fuck to. Fuck yeah. Why why did you only have one last week? What happened? Well, I just went to dinner and they had a charcuterie board. Uh, yeah, that's I, so I good. I love it, man. Variety of meat and cheeses. It's the best. Yeah. It's so good. Mm -hmm. And it's the perfect appetizer, too. Yeah, and you sit down and you find every combination of two of them, and it's just the best. It's so good. Yeah. yeah. I'm getting hungry. Me too. I was, Same. I was gonna say something, too, and now I'm all distracted. Get the butter, man. Dude, I, I love fucking butter so much. My <laughs> god, what a, what a god sense. Sometimes uh, I wonder, like, how all of this shit was invented. We are quite creative with our foods, because you look at animals and, you know, it's a fucking monkey just picks, like, lice from each other's heads and that's what they eat. And then you look at humans and we invent cheese. We're fucking geniuses. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. fucking wild, the huge variety of foods humanity has. I mean, nearly every single animal eats, like, the same two fucking fruits or veggies or other animal, like, its whole life. And then for us, we can have seven different proteins and 30 different carbs and all these different like things even without importing just the things that we figured out how to grow where we live it's fucking nuts that's why yeah, we're so diverse because different people in different places had to figure out different foods to survive you know whatever yeah. they had available and it's just but for me it, like I, I always wonder how many people had to die until we figured out that this particular pepper is not lethal you know, <laughs> or this particular piece of fermented milk wasn't going to give you like yeah. deadly diarrhea. And actually, it makes blue cheese, which some people like. Fermentation really fucks with my head, mostly because I'm an idiot. But the idea that you let something intentionally spoil in a way and then it it mm -hmm. becomes better or good. <laughs> I know. I it know. Does, I don't get it. <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me. A lot of that experimentation <laughs> had to be so disgusting and gross. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. Just yeah, the I concept mean, someone... of sucking milk out of a cow's titty. Like, someone had to initially do that. Or crack an egg that just came out of a chicken's ass. Milk, I kind of get more, like, because you look at the baby cow and you go, well, if it can drink it, maybe I can drink it too, you know? Monkey see, <laughs> monkey do. But fermentation, <laughs> it's like you, you come across a spoiled bucket of milk and you were like, oh, it's all goopy. Hmm. Well, maybe it'll still taste good. And then it does. I don't know. So there's a there's a question. Is there an animal whose milk that you'd try that we don't drink? Like so normally we drink like goat and cow milk, but is there an animal out there? You you could get some of its Didn't milk and give it a swig. Didn't we, we do this whole topic and then we ended up at Jackson's mom's milk? Oh, <laughs> so like half an hour that. On this. that might have been a long time ago. <laughs> that was the R rated official podcast episode that we did away. <laughs> we all took turns <laughs> suckling Jackson's mom. Yeah, giving her a rating. Uh, yeah, oh, it was because Jackson was like confused why we why it's okay to drink animal milk but not your mom's milk as an adult. I no, 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 that's no. Right. I didn't say your mom's milk. I said we should make a human like milk farm from random people and then send that <laughs> milk out. So it's completely different. Uh huh. You don't know. You, you said your mom in particular. Why can't people no, drink did my mom? That was it. That was the line. Yeah. <laughs> she needs it. a job, please. So what? <laughs> drink uh -huh. Jackson's mom. Put it on T-shirts. I'd buy it. Save it from the streets. <laughs> I, yeah, no. I I still don't know why we can't drink human milk. Why we haven't, like, given people human milk jobs. Surely people would like that job. Well, not like I that job, but it would be a good job. It would build the economy. I think the idea is that it's seen so much for babies that people would find it wasteful and distasteful <laughs> to drink it just, as an adult. You, you need to either be pregnant or just, like finished having a kid to effectively produce milk mm -hmm. yeah, well, we, why, don't we, um, why don't we milk women while pens. they're pregnant like we do cows and then bottle it up yeah it's like a seasonal job yeah it's it's kind of like donating sperm you can't do it all the time but yeah do it every so Wait, often don't don't marry like women they're not able to go to work or whatever they get mater maternity that's leave right or once a woman is married she's not allowed to work jackson it's fucked Did up i said married i meant you pregnant said married yeah <laughs> isn't it just a purely like maybe it's also output thing like how much milk can a woman produce in a day compared to a cow you know yeah mm, true a cow has like 18 fucking little nipples on it whereas a human woman only has two uh, mm -hmm. cow's got four but yeah well, yeah but you, you can Depending on the cow. You can, yeah. you can do markup, though. You can mark up the human 
titty milk because it comes from like a personal touch. Yeah, but it's still just pure output. The volume that would just there. be mm-hmm. yeah. Then it's just like a collector's item thing for like rich people who drink special water and shit. You know? I think yeah. we're on for some, to something for sure though, because the only nutritionally perfect food for a human is breast milk. So if we could somehow well, get baby, around for a baby human, well, yeah, for own human. but but either <laughs> way, it's it's not like it would in any way be bad for us. I can't imagine being an adult and drinking it. So I think we need to find a way to get around the taboo and stigma and just be like, hey, let's sell some breast milk. Are we sure there's no benefit past being a baby for drinking breast milk? I'm pretty I'm pretty sure. Yeah. What would the benefit be? It's yummy. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Stronger relationship. I don't know. I don't know. You get attached to the woman you drink from. You fall in I love guess. with her. True. You I gotta mean, get to the there tap. has to be some some meaning to that babies like stop because it's not like human babies are the only ones who stop drinking their mom's milk past True. a certain age. You know, all mm-hmm. animals do it. I feel like if there if it was just like a social thing that humans invented, then animals would still like do it too as adults. Do you think if animals had the intelligence to comprehend it, they would want to drink human milk? Like a cow would be like, ooh, I want to try that. That looks good. Hmm. Maybe. I mean, I'm sure you could find plenty of cat ladies who would breastfeed their cats. That's for sure. Oh. Yeah, there was that lady on the yeah. plane recently who got kicked off for breastfeeding her cat. Yeah, that's a thing. I thought what? that was fake. I thought that was uh, like a little fake cat doll. I don't know, maybe. Oh, yes. I, I, Someone says that sure. was fake. Did she fake news. A doll? Did, she, did she whip her titty out on the plane? Yes or no? Because I'm still... She's still insane, if that's the Just case. Just a little nipple, and she was holding like a cat, puppy, uh, cat doll to it. And then they revealed it, and I think the whole cabin had like a laugh, and that was it. They, I'm they sure there was like actual, it was a magic I, I, trick. I have zero doubt that there's actual people doing that. Mm. Uh, what was your second topic, Andrew? Uh, well, my second topic, I, I actually discovered three topics in total <laughs> while we were talking. Mm. And the second topic is probably he about... just keeps getting them. They're about how yeah. great movement watches are. Oh. Wouldn't you agree? Oh. Yeah. Yes. That's a great second topic, isn't it? It is. I, it is. I thought it over. It. I tossed and turned, I just left and right thought about what I wanted to talk about, and then I looked at my wrist to check the time, and I went, my god, that's it. Movement watches. Movement doesn't just make watches, though. They also make blue light glasses to protect your eyes from screens. Minimalist jewelry so that you can look handsome while you're drinking whatever breast milk you fancy. And style essentials that don't break the bank. They've got tons and tons of of different styles of watches. You can scroll on there for hours just trying to pick out what you want. Minimal, sleek, nice looking. They've got a dive watch, some sport watches, tons of different types for whatever you want, whether you're going to the office or going on a hike. They also have the look and quality of a four to $500 watch, but you're paying a fraction of that cost and getting it shipped right to your door. If you want to elevate your look with style that doesn't break the bank, then join the movement and get 15% off today with free shipping and free returns by going to mvmt.com slash official. That's mvmt.com slash official. They also make fantastic gifts. I've got a couple of movement watches and usually around, I don't know, birthdays. I go, hey, you got a watch? No, here you go. They look great, work great. mvmt.com slash official. And while you're checking out the new movement, you're going to be doing a lot of Googling. You're going to be hopping on the internet real hard. Well, why don't you do it safely? Why don't you do it without hackers looking at your data? Why don't you do it in a way that makes you feel good about connecting to random websites you've never even been to before? (laughs) And that's why you're going to do it with ExpressVPN. Let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. Using the internet without a VPN, specifically ExpressVPN, is like walking your dog in, in public without a leash. I mean, yeah, if your dog's well-behaved and you're walking places you know, you'll probably be okay. But what if one day your dog gets distracted and just takes off? What if someone grabs your dog and takes off? Nothing you can do about that. So use a VPN. Put that leash on. Use ExpressVPN. 
Anytime you connect to an unencrypted network, cafes, hotels, airports, whatever, your data is not secured. And also, a hacker could look at it and go, hey, mm, look at that, look at that yummy data. But it would take a hacker a, super a supercomputer with over a billion years of access to try to get past ExpressVPN's encryption. It works Did on every know? device. Go ahead. By the way, that hackers aren't the only problem. So in case you are in a country that is currently just mm -hmm. coincidentally involved in a war, you might want to <laughs> browse Twitter and Facebook and TikTok and whatnot on a VPN. <laughs> just a little hint mm -hmm. to my Russian friends out there. We might have we might have a host on this show who lives in a place where he often needs to hide his internet access. I know things are rough for you in Australia, Jackson. But yeah, it's awful. Fucking yeah, terrible. Government. But either way, if you're going to want to take advantage of all of those things, as well as something I use VPNs for all the time, changing your region to get different shows on different streaming services, go ahead and try ExpressVPN. You'll get three months of ExpressVPN for free at expressvpn.com slash official. That's expressvpn.com slash official. Three months free, expressvpn.com slash official. And I know that you're running to movement right now to get those watches. You're running to ExpressVPN to download that VPN. And you're looking down at your incredibly well-toned and well-maintained body and saying, my God, how am I running to these things so fast? Well, it's probably because you used FitBod. FitBod is going to make sure that it doesn't matter how far into 2022 we are. You're going to find time to get that workout plan in. They use an innovative algorithm that learns about your goals and training ability and crafts a personalized regimen that's unique to you. You will have access to this routine at any time with their easy to use app, and you can make progress goals anywhere at any time. FitBod is not about comparing yourself to others since they craft everything within your workout around you, and they help to plan out what you'll be doing to make progress a little better than yesterday, which as every single fitness trainer and junkie knows, it's always about small, consistent progress. Right, Charlie? You're a big fitness that's right. boy. I am. That's right. Part of achieving how you want to look and feel your best is FitBod's program for your unique goals as well as equipment. If you want to just do bodyweight workouts, they got you covered. Can't go to a gym. Got you covered. Whether you want to work out three days a week or twice a day, they have you covered. FitBod is only $12.99 a month or $79.99 a year compared to a gym that is extremely reasonable. Kick the new year off right and get started with your customized fitness plan from FitBod. 25% off a membership when you sign up at fitbod.me slash official. That's 25% off of your membership at fitbod.me slash official. Thank nice. you. That was a great mm. topic. It was one of my favorites. I bring it up every week. Just can't help it. <laughs> I uh, use it every so, week. So my other topic, and then I promise I'll shut up, is I was on CNN. I saw. <laughs> oh, yeah. I just I had to bring it up. I to brag. I, I <laughs> had to bring it up. I think it's such a fucking funny cacophony of wacky shit that happened. So, uh, so Charlie, you said you saw Jackson. Kaya, do you know what happened? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I also okay, saw the I'll... angry comments. <laughs> yeah, the comments yeah. were the best part. So I'll give, a, I'll give a, Oh, there's a bunch of angry ones, yeah. Uh, I'll give a I'll give a recap to anyone listening who doesn't know what happened. So uh I do a series, how it's actually made, and it is a very subtle at first parody of the series how it's made. So oftentimes, every single day. People will click on it thinking it's the real show, and then I see comments where they're like, oh, I thought this was real, I can't believe it, my teacher put this on in class and we didn't know it was fake, and this and that. Because it, it starts subtle, <laughs> and then it gets, you know, wackier and wackier and more and more jokes. So, CNN has a daily news column they do, I think it's called Daily Five? I want to mm -hmm. yeah. make sure, yeah, Daily Five. And the idea is that it's, um, supposed to be like five large, five things, sorry, not daily five, five things on CNN. And it's been running for a long time on there. 
And the whole point is that it's five major headlines that they kind of, you know, touch on. They give you a bit of a summary. It's like a rundown. Yeah, yeah a ru it's a daily rundown of what's in the news today. So, for example, the daily five for today I'm on there is Ukraine, oil prices, coronavirus, tornadoes and Trump. And they, they give Fun. you like a paragraph or two on like what's going on with it. Then you keep scrolling and they give you like smaller headlines, like one single sentence. They give you a random quote. They give you a number of the day that ties to a specific fact. Today is 128 billion, which is how much Batman has brought in so far. They do the weather, etc. And then at the very end, they give you a, a lighter piece, you know, a lighthearted fluff nice family friendly piece a lot of news outlets do that they may want to make you feel better so they'll have like hey look at this street pre pianist playing the piano on the street isn't that fun watch this toddler recite the abcs it's so cute look at this puppy learning to swim so one day their <laughs> idea was learn how bread is made to go along with your morning coffee and toast and they put my video by mistake <laughs> Oh, um, it was my mistake? I thought they yes. did it on purpose because... Oh, shit. So that makes a, it even better. That's a big God. plot twist, actually. I can't reveal too many details about that yet, but what I can say is I've been contacted by CNN over this whole thing. And, and they're suing you. Yeah, well, I fucking <laughs> hope not. I would, be, I would be fucking homeless in 10 minutes. Um, but no, Suing they, you for their mistake. They admitted it was a mistake. And uh, they did not get to notice it was a mistake for a whole day because everyone left the office shortly after setting that up to go live. So, <laughs> What a great editorial uh, yeah, system brilliant. they've got in yeah, place so they didn't yeah. even watch your video. They just went by a title, <laughs> yeah. I guess. <laughs> nope, they did not. And that's the funny thing, too. They clearly did not watch my video because... I say shit like the bread urinates on itself and, <laughs> yeah. and one of the machines is called the better bitch slapper. Like they did not watch yeah. the video at all. This is all let's see. I thought it was like, it was in the fun section because they were having fun there. Like, no, it was a funny no. video. Or whatever. It was you totally know? unintentional. It's supposed to be like a serious kind of lighthearted daily news column and they had no idea. Um, Man, that makes this even better. That's yeah. funny. So, so that's been, ch it's been changed uh, since then, unfortunately. They did update it Aww. to a different video. But I put a follow-up video on my channel with an archive link showing, like, when it was up there. And it was on there for about a day and a half. And I got floods of comments from angry boomers on that video. People <laughs> people whose YouTube profiles are their legal first and last name with a picture of them as taken as a selfie, saying things like, oh, this... This is disgusting. How could CNN run this absolute filth? Or, <laughs> I really like the video, but watch it on mute. It is not f safe for work and not safe for children. I am offended, CNN. And then my, my personal favorite was one guy said, I'm a bread maker, and I need you all to know this is commercial bread. This is <laughs> not how the pros <laughs> make bread. <laughs> <laughs> the oh, pros boy. don't make the bread piss themselves. <laughs> they don't use the batter bitch slapper in the big yeah. industry. That's super weird. He's yeah, clearly not a professional. Did Snopes come out to fact check your video? Too? Was it necessary? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, man. Yeah, I, I, I had to scroll through the comments and it was just oh, so, so fucking good. bad. I'm so unaware. I know, so, so many so many clueless idiots. And what I don't understand is a ton of them were saying, like, this video is not for children. And it's like, why are you on CNN if you're a child? I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a world full of child, Andrew. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. But yeah, that's... that's yep. You've I've got another their five daily things. I know. So I've got another follow up coming out, but I've got to kind of clear what I can and can't talk about because I'm I'm talking to someone from CNN and I ha they're like, oh, you know, you can say this, you can't, because they've they've got fucking PR and people who 
they can't say what, things. Why, why do they suddenly own you? It was their mistake. Yeah. You should be able to uh, well, say whatever. Not, I don't want to put the video out just for them to immediately issue a takedown notice and have to deal with that shit. You should you know? prank them again and like double down. <laughs> like, actually, this fight wasn't a joke. This is how we make it non-commercial, bro. <laughs> you, should, you should make a video that's called How It's Made News at CNN. It's just a monkey eating shit. Oh on the Whoa. floor <laughs> really <laughs> staring it on the walls that's a good idea how cnn is actually made yeah <laughs> yeah that's so that's... embarrassing i fucking hate it when they like news articles do this shit where they don't fact check a single thing they don't yeah. even click their own links that's what i find funny man it's it starts getting clearly parody only like a minute and a half in yeah so they just did not I watch mean, yeah it. it's subtle at first maybe for like the first three sentences but then the first mm -hmm. line well, not the first time, but yeah, after the first three sentences, it becomes pretty aware that this is a joke. It's yeah, satire. It, it, it becomes a parody quite clearly at about a minute in, and so they just didn't even watch it. They just slapped it on there. Didn't yeah, even check. Another thing that I've noticed, though, I guess not really in their defense, but when you go into something expecting it to be real, you're much more susceptible to a bunch of, like, bullshit. Because mm. I remember there was a video I watched a long time ago that was kind of like how it's made, but it was a parody. And I didn't know it was a parody. It was about, like, uh, like I think it was a, something to do with bread, actually, if, if I remember correctly. Was it how <laughs> it's actually made bread? Because that's a great <laughs> video. No, it's, it's a really it's funny not, video. Yeah, this, was, this was, like, ten years ago. This was, like, when mm. Power Thirst and shit was big. Oh, okay. Someone made something similar for bread. And it was supposed to be like, I think it was bread, I'm going off memory. And it was supposed to be really instructional, but it was very clearly joking. But I was convinced it was all real for the longest time. Mm -hmm. And like, it's just one of those things where when you go in there with the lens like, this is real information, you'll just digest it and accept it as a fact. Right, so, right. So even if you're saying like the bread urinates on itself, you could do mental gymnastics and be like, oh, it must be a bread making term. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I get them publishing it by mistake, putting it in there. But the fact it took them over a day to fix it surprises me because you'd think once the article goes up, they double check it. But no, they just didn't nope. even watch it. They never watched it. Who is in charge of doing that? Uh, they have different article writers who do the different days. And then there's like an like editor is... who oversees all of it. I assume something like that is just delegated to a lowly intern. Like, hey, we yeah. need to these. Uh, we need to meet our 127 articles a day quota. Use whatever, mm -hmm. just churn out words, and they could probably pay like right. two bucks a word. It's not that bad of a viewership either. So the bread video only got a view spike of like 150,000, which that's significant. But compared to like the whole of CNN, it could have been way more people looking at it. Yeah, but. This is just a small blog post, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a small little like. And it's a tack little on small cliff note down in the bottom of like a yeah. happy video. 150k so is actually way more than yeah, I thought they that's, would get. That's the other thing yeah, when you when you go on five things on mobile, uh, that part is actually hidden under the read more button. So I would assume mm. that the most like the majority of people that read five things or five what the fuck daily five I don't remember the name. Um, I'd assume the majority of people that read it don't even, like, check out the extra stuff. They just read the five headlines and then move on. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But I, I just think it's fun. I got to be on CNN for a whole day and no one noticed. And It's fun. It's fun. It is fun, it's fun and depressing. This is our <laughs> most prestigious news organizations out there. Here's how you piss on bread. <laughs> yep. I got to upset a lot of boomers reading their daily news. It was fun. Yeah, the comments were the best part. They were so they were so angry. They were just so mad. Oh, did they? So did they? Uh, <laughs> One of my. Did they become loyal audience members? Did they like go to other videos some of them on, were your, nice. on your channel? Some of them were nice. One of them was like, "Oh, this this is not." safe for work but boy did it make my day and she put like a laughing emoji like some of them Aww. were nice yeah That's cute. one of my favorite ones though was this guy he was typing like uh this is embarrassing and childish i hate it but then at the end he put your commentary made me throw up <laughs> like, <laughs> jesus it's like god damn what a violent reaction i wonder if he uh, got angry letters like i'm oh, probably from yeah. your mailing list this is beyond the pale what kind of I, I don't think they running? even I don't think they even changed it based on me making vi videos about it and talking about it on like Twitter and shit. I think they changed it because people complained because they 
Uh, like they they put it up on CNN and then five hours later I made my content talking about it and then only a day and a half later did they change it so I think it's just someone in their emails or something pointed it out because I I don't know they obviously weren't watching it too closely <laughs> clearly <laughs> yeah clearly you should have milked it you should have milked it uh like for all it was worth and like try to build it up into some big monumental thing where they actually have to cover <laughs> on the nightly CNN news. Yeah, <laughs> I think you should have really with... like you should have gone after CNN like they're free lo or free booting my work. Yeah, they stole your their, content, yeah. Andrew. Yeah. They didn't even oh, wait. So that means they didn't ask for permission either. Well, they just they they basically they just it. embedded oh, wow. it. So yeah, it yeah. Like they re-uploaded it. Just a public and see, YouTube I'd love video. to do that too, but I mean, I'm using how it's made footage, so. <laughs> oh, yeah. True. <laughs> and you better believe I don't ask them for permission. <laughs> That's uh, what still would have been funny um David versus Goliath events mm -hmm, if yeah. you somehow got mm -hmm. embroiled in a lawsuit like I, oh CNN is suing me because they fucked up and spread yeah. fake news or whatever. I, I don't want to shit on them too hard though, because the person that I spoke to and I'm currently speaking to is was very nice. She was very understanding, <clears throat> very nice about all of it. She had a sense of humor. Their mistake. Yeah, she admitted entirely it was their fault. They just made a fuck up. They should have checked it. Quickly like screen capped that and sent it to the uh, lawyer. Say if you could do anything Yeah, say, so how do we destroy <laughs> yeah, her? Admitted call. She admitted fault. <laughs> yeah, just, <laughs> just, like, just this poor woman. But no, they, they haven't for asked slander. me... They haven't asked me to take down or change my video at all. They were very cool about it. They they. Well, yeah, I would hope them. so. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine the audacity if they told you to take it down? <laughs> there, there are companies that'll do that, man. There are companies where if you shit on them or make a video calling the stuff out, they'll be like, take the video down, you're making us look bad. Like, I wouldn't put it past someone like CNN, but they were very, they were very cool about it. They've That's been very true. cool. People are fucking douchebags about this shit. Have you guys heard about Brendan Schaub, I think his name is? Yeah, he's Brendan like Schaub. I oh, never, yeah, no. he's one so of them. So give me a rundown, who is that? Yeah. He's this, like, fitness guy, I think, who has his own show and whatnot, but I only know him because he's semi-regularly on Joe Rogan's show, so he gets a lot of, like, airtime on big shows. And this mm -hmm. guy's now suing a minuscule YouTuber called Unique or Saiyan Z or some shit, who's been on... Uh, who are these podcasts, actually? It's literally just a guy in his basement, this fucking weirdo, who made fun of Brandon Schaub, and now Brandon Schaub is suing him, and he took his fucking entire YouTube channel down because he was made Aww. fun of. Wow. It's like So let me go a bit deeper. I, I followed this for a bit. Right. So mm -hmm. Brendan Schaub is a former MMA laughing stock. He did have a decent career in the MMA. It wasn't like amazing. It wasn't he's, great. He's huge on Twitter though. He's got eight hundred thousand followers. Well look at it look at his interaction. You'll see like thirteen likes, twelve oh, wow. likes. Oh yeah. No, he only gets yeah. a couple uh, hundred so likes. Dude, he's wow. a, he's it or, a complete it, nobody. Wow. Yeah, so he, yeah, but it, did, did he bot that or was he big at some point? No, and no, no. So it, the widely accepted theory is that he bots a lot of his yeah. uh, mm -hmm. his numbers, uh, at least according to some of the, the subreddits I've looked at for him. But he, he is popular because of Joe Rogan. He is the number one reoccurring guest. I think he has 83 appearances on Rogan. Jesus. Yep. Wow. Is he living he, in the yeah. office? That's nuts. Yep. So then he launched. He's launched like five fucking podcasts, and they're all trash. He's perhaps one of the worst comedians I've ever heard, which is something I don't say lightly. Like it, you, you know me. I watch mm -hmm. all of the bad stand up. I listen to all the terrible shitty comedy just because I always have that morbid fascination. He's definitely towards the top of that list. And on one of his podcasts, or not on one of his podcasts, the other day. He out of nowhere just took down that guy's channel and uh, is now suing him and then took down his second channel where he mentioned the lawsuit. So Good Lord. It's, it's been it's been kind of wild. Now, it's not confirmed he took down the channel, but the channels are down after he is suing him. So you can make a strong case that it was mm -hmm. him that did it. Jesus, and this, fuck. And he is fully and I want to read YouTube though. really the channel he took down is a complete nobody. The guy got like 300 views on his videos and they're usually like him making fun of people like Brendan Schaub or Stuttering like John. Brendan's a nobody too. Fair. It's not that yeah. surprising, yeah. but it's not that surprising he can do it. I mean, YouTube usually always sides with the people making the claims, right? Well, so Brendan Schaub went through an agency. I think it was Bent Pixel. Oh, yeah. the, the subreddit called oh, yeah. him Bent if... Penis. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, if, if Brendan Schaub... 
if Brendan Schaub's coming to YouTube with, with the backing of Big Penis, then yeah. YouTube's immediately just going to see that and go, oh, we believe them. That's an agency. Yeah, it's, I've actually heard of Bent Pixel before. Uh, I, I don't know if I can really get into how I know of them, but their big thing is they make most of their money through doing exactly what they did with Schaub, which is taking so down... So they're an like, extortion gig. Yeah. <laughs> basically <laughs> unironically that's how they make the bulk of their cash is they copyright a bunch of shit throughout youtube and make the money off of it fucking it's gross honestly mm -hmm. so he went through them uh the videos were taken down and then his channels were deleted may or may not have been because of shab and he is suing <laughs> the guy for, for further damages but i think one of the big things of his lawsuit is he's claiming that he was using brendan shab's content illegally so fair use didn't apply i think Mm -hmm. Which is really stupid considering Brendan Schaub also uses other people's content for the sake of his comedy and shit. So he's hurting himself if he wins, which he won't. <laughs> so it's a lose-lose. Yeah, he's actually one of the dumbest men I've seen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a bitch move. What a bitch move. His entire like shows the ideas he makes fun of people and then somebody does it to him. And you take his channel down. Mm -hmm. Fucking bitch. He also is a big advocate against cancel culture, and then he immediately cancels this fucking guy. What fucking a douche. takes him to court, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Brendan Schaub sucks. Uh, the subreddit, though, that makes fun of him, though, has given me a couple of big giggles recently. I don't know if you've seen it, Kaya. His own oh, podcast no. subreddit, it's called The Fighter and the Kid. That's the name of his podcast. Ugh. And the sub the subreddit is huge, but they only make fun of him, <laughs> like <laughs> brutally insult him. And they have their own entire like language structure. They, uh, oh, like, I know. Yeah. Oh, my God. What, what do they I call themselves? I don't know his subreddit language specifically, but I know like this genre of subreddit were just meant to hate on somebody, which is fucking weird. Yeah. There's there's a one that sprang up for a uh, angry video game nerd called Cinemassacre Truth that does the same thing where it's bigger than the official subreddit and all they do is shit on him. Angry I find video that game behavior nerd. super weird. Boogie, it's kind of weird, um, but it's I, they're really like entertaining about it. They they role play as fry cooks, so anytime there's <laughs> drama, they're like, oh god, it's gonna we got another one on the line, boys. We're gonna be working overtime it's here to get mix. this new dish out. It, it's a mix. So this happens to a lot of people. Like angry video game nerd, the game grumps guys, I think. Uh -huh. uh, Boogie, Brandon Schaub, and Stuttering John is one of them too. And it's it's a mix of like 50% of people seem to be having a good time with it. With like with Stuttering John, for example, because he lives with cockroaches. People will dress up as cockroaches and green screen themselves into his apartment, which is what? funny. But then you have the like really mean, genuinely angry and psychotic people yeah, on there too. Who are like, yeah. Yeah. If I, met, mm -hmm. if I met Stuttering John, I beat the shit out of him. That guy needs to have his face rearranged. I fucking hate him. If anybody deserves AIDS and cancer on the planet, it's him. It's like, whoa. Why are you so mad at this guy? Like, did he kill your puppy? What happens here? It's over. Yeah, yeah that's, that's my problem with those subreddits is it's, it's fun in small doses, but then you start seeing, like, people posting on the same thread all the time and they're always angry or you know like yeah. people live in those kind of subreddits they make it like their entire personality it's kind of creepy i, I saw seen... that with boogies hate sub True. as well i haven't seen that with shab though in particular like i only see this fucking really goofy role playing like they cook whenever he gets in trouble they call him i think they say he gets good douched and they have like their own like whole language structure to it it's so interesting that says culty. What's like, the, what's the subreddit name again? Uh, the Fighter and the Kid. Because uh, that's the yeah. name of his podcast. So just they found just, it. Yeah, they just took over. Just read a few of those, Andrew. You'll yeah. see exactly yeah, I, what I mean. If, that if sounds you are like, interested that, in the Boogie Hate <laughs> sub, it's his real sub. <laughs> yeah, sub. now it is. It used, to, it used to be a different one, but then it, I think yeah. Oh, yeah, it he got removed banned, for he? hate. I don't yeah. know if he got them banned, but it, it well, got he kept banned, making like a dozen videos on them a day. Well, he tw Twitter posts, yeah. Oh wow. Um, I, I do like I do like when they take over the actual official <laughs> subs though with yeah. hate and Char they'll just create their own. Yeah. Charlie's onto something here. One of the newest like hot rising posts on the Brandon fucking subreddit is: Can we talk about how fucking weird Brandon's facial hair is? I feel like it never gets mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just a picture of his face. 
They also do. I've well, seen I've seen a cool uh, a couple cool photoshops and edit of Brendan Schaub's uh, content too. Like, and then in the comments they're like, "Oh, he's cooking up something fierce in the kitchen here today, boys." <laughs> That's so what was what was the fry fun. cook thing? I don't know. I don't know where the fry cook thing comes from, but it's really interesting. Holy this is really shit, it though. This, this guy's like entire claim to fame is I know a famous person and I go yeah, on a it, show it actually is. often. Yeah, it, and also he lives off his father's money. So most of the his mm. money comes from his dad. What does his dad do? I uh, I don't know. He met, maybe owns does he, bent does pixel. he run Yeah, I was gonna say, does he run bent penis or whatever the fuck it was called? <laughs> <laughs> It's his subreddit. Just it, it has given me quite a few giggles recently. They call him Bryn Dumb. <laughs> it's like really silly stuff. <laughs> it, sounds, it sounds like it's a, like a subreddit full of like elementary school kids. No, it really like these is. Are, they keep it very no, simple. They just make it really fun because they're trying to talk like him because he talks like an actual child. Uh, I think he has like CTE or something, so he's he's not like all there a lot of the time. So they'll talk like him. What's CTE? Wow, from fighting. Uh, it's like a concussion. injuries. Yeah, concussions. Oh, yeah, so they like they damage? write they write like a lot of like really just basic kind of elementary school style of typing. It's funny. It, on purpose, yeah. It's really yeah. interesting. Oh, so they're doing it so that he can understand. That's kind of sweet. Aww. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the, so they always say, like, getting good douched. Um, what are the other ones? They call him Bapa. Yeah. I don't know why they call him Bapa. Big Bapa. Yeah, that makes sense. I don't know where that comes from. It's like an old fighting term, right? I, I don't know. Bumped. And instead of saying, like, talking about, they say Tom bout. And they always, yeah. like, drag things out like that. <laughs> they, they, say, cool. they say, good. like... They they say that he has one of the most talked about quality specials. Oh yeah, comedies. Yeah, yeah, comedy. <laughs> this is cute. Fucking like this. Schaub. Is that his name? What's his Brent, name? Yeah. Brendan Schaub. Yeah, Brendan yeah. Schaub. Holy so shit! Are we gonna hear from Ben's penis now? I I, I don't know. Hopefully not. <laughs> This is great. <laughs> what a clown. Yeah, maybe we've made an enemy here. He does have a Wikipedia page. Apparently the current the current craze now is to post how disgustingly he eats food with his tongue hanging out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The other day, uh, well, I guess it was like five days ago now, the big one on there was how bad he is at lifting because his technique is terrible. So he posted a picture on Twitter where he's doing a deadlift and he had a completely rounded back. One knee was locked out while the other was like flaccid. It Ugh. looked like just an injury waiting to happen. So the subreddit was just joking about that. They even did fan art. So someone took some crayons and drew that with a spine popping out. <laughs> Apparently he fucking Apparently he fucking guest starred on a podcast and when he said he was on it he put the wrong name of the wrong podcast. <laughs> 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 this is great. <laughs> uh. Yeah, his subreddit has been giving me so, some laughs. I didn't the know Brendan Shaw until though. this. <clears throat> it is it's 60k, 60k followers, so he can't be a nobody. Well, he's not. Like I said, he suckled off Joe Rogan for a long time. Still does. Mm -hmm. He's the number one reoccurring guest on Rogan. 83 appearances, man. Do you think he just God, maybe he shows up to Rogan's studio and starts breaking shit until they put him on? Does he have blackmail on Rogan or something? Yeah, he's Why would he have this guy on? Mm -hmm. What a boring I, I don't fuck. Know. Yeah, he, 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 offers, all his videos. he offers fucking nothing. I think he also has a <laughs> podcast with Chris D'Elia, which is, I, I guess, pretty fitting considering I consider Chris D'Elia one of the worst stand-up comics in the game. So I guess it makes sense that they'd be friends. But yeah, he knows a lot of big people. He has big connections and has daddy's money. Good lord. Douche. Well. Yeah. I hope Unique wins, even though he's also a fucking weirdo that I don't like. No, yeah, the guy who's getting sued is not a good guy. He is what? not a good guy by any means. What's the thing, Charlie, where a lot of people are posting dice emojis and saying dicey over and over? 
in his stand-up comedy, he said, mm-hmm. I, if I, I don't remember what the joke was. He made a stupid fucking joke. And then at the end of it, I don't think anyone laughed. So he went, dicey, dicey. <laughs> <laughs> so now they just say that That's sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's not a bad comedian. That made you guys laugh, and it wasn't even him delivering. It. <laughs> That's, That's true. a pretty yeah, good joke. I'm not like lie. Special. <laughs> pretty good. Yeah, his material's <laughs> up there. I'll tell you what. Ah, <laughs> uh, classic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was pretty good. The Brendan Shop thing's been a little wild adventure. So, is anything going to happen stop with browsing this? No, he just continues to ignore it. Uh, so the thing is, he ignores any type of, like, anything negative. He just pretends it doesn't exist unless the person is too small. Or, like, really small. So he always used to say, like, nobody hates me that's uh, important. Nobody hates Brendan Shaw Bapa, who's important. <laughs> Only these little guys. These little guys that I'd beat up. Because he also no. was like... He contradicts Cringe. himself. At one point, he was like, I would never resort to physical violence to handle things. That's when you lose. And then, like, five days later, he's like, I would actually beat the shit out of anyone <laughs> that says negative things about me. I would literally <laughs> beat them up in the fucking streets. I've noticed a recurring theme with, like, MMA fighters. Most of the amateur ones, I guess, not the big ones, because they probably have publicists. But a lot of MMA fighters are so, like... I guess roided up on shit that they they are so, so aggressive outside of the room. Oh, this like is so a, many assaults yeah. and this is a question stuff. I wanted to ask maybe Charlie because you would know the most. Are there any MMA fighters who are just like really nice? Like they're always like, oh, I can't wait for my fight. Oh, it's gonna be great. Ha ha. Um, I so I don't know many MMA fighters. Uh, full disclosure, I don't know many of them. But I can say with a high level of confidence, almost every WWE wrestler yes. is the nicest fucking person on the planet. Oh, yeah. They are so sweet. So well, they're w- like entertainers so, more so. Yeah, so, right? WWE... It's not even comparable, but I'm just right. talking about as far as like roided out or like highly fitness regiment and combat oriented. Because regardless of the WWE being scripted and everything, they're still athletes. They're still going out there to perform and the stunts right. are pretty tough oh, and yeah. demanding. Yeah. Very and physical they, stuff, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've I've known that truth for a while where wrestlers, you know, they're putting on personalities and putting on a show, but most of the time, you know, they're just great entertainers and friendly people. But what I've seen with nearly MMA, every MMA fighter is every way that they talk and everything that they hype up is, oh, I'm so fucking tough. I'm such a badass. I'll kick your fucking ass. I'm the strongest in the world. I'm going to fuck you in the ass yeah. live on a camera. A lot of it's just theatrics, though. A lot of that's, that's just a hype yeah. up ticket sales. And I'm wondering, I'm wondering if there's an FC fighter who is going against the grade. And like, say he has a big match. He's like super excited to go to the ring with this guy. It's going to be a lot of fun. Can't there was wait. A- there was a guy, I don't, I don't remember who it was, but a few years ago, there was a guy at one of their weigh-ins when they're doing, like, the tough guy posing. He just kissed the other guy in the mouth. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and oh. at one point, he brought him flowers. I remember that guy. Yeah, that guy was yeah. cool. He did a whole <laughs> montage where, like, he would put his arm around them and take a selfie. He there would, like, a, give him a hug. Yeah. There is a rather wholesome champion right now. I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but he's a huge weeb. So he tries to emulate <laughs> Rock Lee from Naruto. That's awesome. So he'll do like Rock Lee poses and shit in the fight and like before the fight <laughs> and always relate it back to like anime. I can't remember his name, <laughs> but he seems like a pretty wholesome guy. You just reminded uh, me of... Uh, back is he big? Ho- is it Israel Adesanya Rock Lee? Yep, that Adesanya. Just, oh, what yeah, came yeah, up? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, Adesanya. You just reminded me, Charlie, back when I lived in South Florida and I went to a local gym... There was a guy there who was like a, he, I think he was a high school weight training coach, but he also was a personal trainer and he would lift there like five, six days a week. So I saw him a lot and he was a huge weeb. He would wear Dragon Ball Z shirts and shit, but he would be doing squats or deadlifts and just put his phone up and he'd just be watching episodes of like Hunter Hunter or Dragon Ball Z while oh. powerlifting. <laughs> it was fucking awesome. That's pretty good. Like, yeah. It's kind of weird because you would expect people who spent a lot of time in the gym and just to get their aggression out, you know, and be more yeah. calm because no, it's but like the, I, I, I was gonna say a lot of a lot of a lot of these people are like built on a history of violence. It seems like it's their whole life, and and they yeah, use so that's many, what like, I was gonna say. And stuff that it, it fucks with their brain. You guys have heard of War Machine, right? I was just about to bring up War Machine. Mm. Yeah, he's I've the heard guy the who name. beat the fuck out of that girl. 
He's yeah, he's ex girlfriend. Wow. Yeah, and he raped her too. Oh, he, weren't they uh, weren't oh, they both guy, famous yeah. and they lived in that like really yeah. giant house and then he just fucking destroyed her and left? So no, he, he they were broken up at the time and she was she had found a new oh, guy. Yeah, and then yeah, he, he yeah. burst into the room while they were like mid Oh yeah, war yeah, he was the guy he was on that MMA show, that television show, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was ultimate the ultimate fighter, fighter I think. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah, I watched the whole thing on that. I remember that. Yeah. Um and so a lot of a lot of the videos around those years from him from his social media are just so deranged mm -hmm. and like he just looks so fucked up mentally. Well, obviously he has to be, but he he he's just so outwardly fucked up. Like he was threatening um what was it like a convenience store clerk because they yep. didn't have his slushy flavor. Yeah. Like he was threatening to beat the fuck out of the guy at the convenience store because they didn't have his slushy like he slush would, drink flavor. He would fucking so he, he'd go to a 7-Eleven, he'd go in, he'd do all his shit yeah. and then he'd go in the car and right when he got in the car he'd turn his phone on and just yeah. as close to it as he could get he'd go, they don't have it! I'm fucking so pissed! Oh, I just, I get like this and I get like this and I, and he would just scream as loud as he could for like an hour. It was, it was slushy. terrifying. It's fucking terrifying yes. shit. If you, if you out there listening don't know of this guy and want to know how heinous he was, he went to jail for doing this thing that we talked about on March uh, 2017. He was convicted of 29 counts of rape and assault from that one Fuck. incident. 29 fucking counts. Like, yeah. fuck me. That's a lot. Jace JCS, you know, the channel that does, yeah. uh, yeah, yeah, they blew up a while ago. They, yeah. they did a good video on him. They showing, did a fantastic like, video, yeah. The, the events and then the court proceedings and stuff. And it was heartbreaking hearing from mm -hmm. her, like her and her mother, just the, the effect that this man had. He, he doesn't deserve to be a free man. No. Is he, he is he out of jail? No, no he, he's, he's years, life, life in prison and no parole for nice. 36 years. Okay, nice. Yeah. No. So he's going to nice. be in there a while at the minimum. That's good. But yeah, just an absolute lunatic. And that's like, I, it's not even, I mean, that's a really bad uh, case, obviously, but I've heard of so many just general assault cases from MMA fighters just outside of the ring. So like they'll, I, yeah. they'll, they'll go I, get I like drunk be... or whatever and then just beat the fuck out of someone random. Mm -hmm. I think that's probably because you're just, if you're a person who's already likely to be hyper aggressive then you're more likely to go into that profession, maybe. It's like self-selection yeah. almost, perhaps. It, it happens with wrestlers, too. Like, a lot of them are nice. It's a much better scale on terms of being personal and all that. But some of those wrestlers, if they turn to steroids or they have anger issues or troubled childhoods, they, behind closed doors, they'll beat their wives or they'll just be really aggressive. They'll be alcoholics and just be reckless. Mm -hmm. It's... It's a it's a lifestyle that comes with a lot that you have to manage. Being that strong and aggressive all the time, it's it can lead to some shit if you don't manage it. You know, sad. Mm -hmm. Well, well, I don't think anyone is. I guess people people can be naturally that uh, that aggressive, but I really think that these particular cases are like a cocktail of substance abuse and those mm -hmm. preconditions. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I mean, it's also the work that doesn't help. Uh, Chris Benoit is a very, like, classic case of this. So you guys know what happened with Chris Benoit, that whole story? No. Well, well, so, sounds familiar. so Chris Benoit was a wrestler, very, very big wrestler in the 2000s. And one day he killed his wife oh, and shit. their son and then himself. And a lot of people had a lot of speculations on what happened, but they're thinking with more recent research into what is it, CTE, that like yep, CTE. constant, yeah, CTE and all the concussions he sustained from wrestling and all the injuries, he just had fucking mental damage from it. And his friend, mm -hmm. Eddie Guerrero, died a few years before that. And they think that the combination of him having to deal with that guilt, along with his brain just being fucked up from constant head trauma, led him to eventually kind of go insane and kill his family and himself. And it's it's a hard lifestyle. It, it You got a lot of shit you got to keep in check. CTE is a fucking scary thing, man. Yeah. It happens I mean, from um, contact sports too, right? Like yeah, NFL. football. Oh, it's football huge has a huge yeah. problem with it. Yep. There's a lot of scandals coming out now about how 
like they want all these new regulations and all these new rules to prevent CT and other shit and football's like, well, that would change the game. Don't do that. That it wouldn't be football. It's fucked. It is. I don't even know how you prevent that though when you're colliding at top speed, top running speed with <laughs> each other. You don't really prevent it, but you just monitor it. Like just mm -hmm. being aware of it. Like there are certain things you can do. Like I know like one of I think one of the bigger ones that kind of helps is C B D, from what I understand. C B D is supposed to be like good for that kind of like I don't know, managing C T symptoms what, or some um, shit. That's what um who's the quarterback of the of the Buccaneers? Uh, oh, Tom Brady. Yeah, doesn't Tom Brady take CBD regularly? I, th I think I think Tom Brady's a big CBD guy. Yeah. I know Gronk is. Yeah, in between Gronk. kisses. Yeah, Gronk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gronk has like his own yeah, CBD he, like line. He, he puts he, the he, CBD on his son's lips and just kisses it off. <laughs> oh, <yuck>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you think the CTE is making him kiss his son so much? I don't think Brady has CTE, man. He's always had a pretty good offensive line. He doesn't get hit that much. Mm-hmm. Didn't he finally retire? And he's pretty smart. Yeah, he retired. Yeah. No. He'll Good. be back. Once really? he misses the human contact. <laughs> the, the warm embrace of another big football man. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't gotten concussed in a week, Doc. I, I kind of miss it. <laughs> he just goes, people, uh, he goes pay goes and pays people to beat him up with a wooden bat just to get his fix <laughs> just to feel it again Dude, it's fucking scary like i'm all for people doing um martial arts and shit because i think it's probably healthy especially for little boys to just get their natural aggression out but it's the shit that can happen is so scary what was the name of that guy who literally got himself beaten into a vegetable that was like a boxing match and his opponent kept stephen like, hawking mm. <laughs> No, there was a professional like boxer who got I think they call it bunny punching or rabbit punching, and they his opponent kept punching him in the back of the head, which you're not allowed to oh. do, but he kept doing it. And the guy literally <laughs> what are they just gonna became do? disabled. What's gonna stop him? He's he's clearly like punching someone in the back of the head. You can't stop that. I guess you could find him after the match, right? Or well, no, well, he kept doing it is what Kai is saying. Yeah, the ref kept uh, intervening sometimes, but also kept just letting him do it. The ref basically was just like, okay, cut it out, no punching in the back of the head. And the guy literally just ended up a, an actual vegetable. He now has the um, IQ of a four-year-old, I think, and he's like permanently uh, a quadriplegic. When he was a completely normal back to guy. The third grade. It's fucked up, yeah. Wow. And that's all it takes is to run into a fucking douchebag psycho who's just gonna ignore the rules and punch you in the head. From the wrong yeah. angle. It's, it's Car dangerous Col fucking Pritchard sports, Cole, man. Yeah, every every contact sport is just dangerous shit. It, it only takes someone doing something improperly to fuck you up real bad. You know? Doesn't seem yeah. like a very fun time to me. No. You know what is sad, though? That, like, I was thinking about Tom Brady's retirement and stuff. It's gonna suck being really good at something and having a natural like age limit on it of only like I don't know fifteen years. Yeah. How, how old are they when they retire? They're usually they in their early forties. Early forties is normal oh, for that's... a back position, and then other positions okay. is yeah. like mid thirties, early thirties. Sometimes yeah. mm -hmm. I know the NRL, which is like the contact sport over here, different sport but similar kind of. You know, they they throw each other in, into each other's bodies. Um, they they retire around like thirty five because it's just so strenuous and they can't keep up with it. I mean, so to be rugby, that good at it and and have to retire at thirty five. Yeah, NRL. Yeah, is rugby. yeah, National Rugby League. I mean, rugby beyond actual fighting like MMA, it wouldn't rugby be like the most contact sport there is. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's the it's more than NFL, I think, because we For don't sure. have the body armor or anything. You're just yeah. colliding well, with the, each other, just so full contact. If I remember correctly, they did something comparing rugby to the NFL, and the NFL is significantly more dangerous than rugby because really? all of the all of the padding and all of the helmets and stuff. It leads to people being more confident in like a full speed hit mm, and more yeah. dangerous things. That's, you go. That's the same. I don't know. Yeah. Isn't, isn't that the same research that was done on boxers boxing, where they found? Yep. Yeah, yeah, boxing gloves you can, you can actually. In, yeah, boxing gloves actually increase the number of concussions because boxers hit a lot harder because it's less cushioning for your head and more cushioning their fists so they can exactly. just keep punching. Yeah. I I mean that I guess that makes sense, but from a pure standpoint of watching. 
watching rugby league and playing in the past, I feel like <laughs> they don't hold back. <laughs> like some of these hits are fucking massive. And before it was made illegal, uh, like five years ago, you could do like pretty dangerous moves, like lifting them up and slamming them on their heads and shit like that. <laughs> True, I so do it, remember it that. Sounds, yeah. It sounds to me like the safest way we do sports is go back to the way ancient Greece did it and just every sport is naked. Pure nudity. Then we'll be really mm. safe because no one, no one wants like to hurt their penis. Motive. <laughs> yeah, no one wants to hurt their dick and balls, so you just you're a little careful while you play. You know, you well, don't exactly right. the safest thing for all of our sports would be no padding. I, I <laughs> like if you took the NFL and took the pads off, I think there would be less injuries overall, which mm -hmm. is so fucking counterintuitive. It is, yeah. Because you'd of course have to change a few of the rules. Like you couldn't really do punt returns anymore because going full speed without pads like that is a death sentence. But this like, would change for sure. Yeah. Would we make it more dangerous then if we wrap them all in bubble wrap? <laughs> oh, what if we did like giant <laughs> Zorb balls? Yeah, or the big sumo yeah. suits. Play football like that. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. would be awesome, actually. I want to see Fuck sumo yeah. football. <laughs> Just Takeshi's castle tile sh type shit. <laughs> we do need new sports. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they should let each player carry a weapon, just one weapon. They get to choose one weapon. Ooh. Like, you know, the gladiatorial arenas back in ancient Roman times where they'd have the board of weapons and you choose one to take into the arena. I still think, oh, yeah. I think we need a blood sport. I think we need a thing. You sign like 50 waivers saying, yes, it's okay if I die. Yes, it's, I'm fine with like this and this and this, blah, blah, blah. And you just put two dudes in an arena. They can bring a weapon and they just fight to the death or just like... They can kill each other. They don't have to. But, like, I, I think we need that. I think there's some people who would absolutely be into that. I think that just... Need all it. you just want do is... It. Sounds like a life feat to a prison yard. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, just make life sentence prisoners do that, and then all the proceeds from people watching that, give it to, like, charity or isn't something. Isn't that the, the plot yeah. of, uh... Isn't there an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie that does that? What am I Are thinking, thinking of? thinking of Speed Racer? No, no, I don't remember Arnold Death Race no. with Jason Statham. Speed Stasem. Racer, yeah. I think it's Running I Man. Death Race. <laughs> oh, Running Man. Maybe. Yeah, I actually do remember Running Man. I don't know if that's the yeah. plot, though, but I do remember Running Man. Yeah, Running Man is death row inmates are put on a game show called The Running Man, and they win the game show and they go free, or if they lose, they die. And Arnold's oh, one of the, yeah. Yeah, I forgot about this movie. Yeah, The Running slapped. Man. slapped. Yeah, it was a good movie. It was cool. It was fun. There was the uh, there was the guy who like ran the game and he used like ice powers, I think. Do and you remember they that? had like the really goofy suits and that one guy had a bunch yep. of like Christmas lights on him, yeah. Yep, yep. Oh, I want to rewatch this movie. It was cool. This is probably what rich and powerful people already do. They probably already have these little arenas set up. Mm -hmm. I doubt oh, it. Oh yeah, I have no doubt that like somewhere beneath Epstein Islands there's like a slave coliseum where they just make people fight or something. <laughs> or just homeless people, you know? Oh yeah, that used to be a thing, just bump fights, yeah. Bump fights, yeah. That is true, I mean, there's IP2 probably... Now. There's probably underground fight clubs and fight rings, we just don't know about them. But they've probably been there for a long time. Yeah, illegal ones. They definitely are. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I don't necessarily want, like, people to die. Something with massive appeal that would be Neither. wholesome, I would be into that. Like I said, like Takeshi's Castle type thing, where... <laughs> yeah, that's They goofy. get to pick their... And there's they no get death. to pick their weapons at the beginning, but they're all like, you know, the goofy, oversized Q-tips and like an, yeah. an axe. Yeah, like Nerf guns cushioned. and shit. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds <laughs> like, fun. I like big, that. And we can use like, use like fingers or something. <laughs> power-ups like Rocket League, where if you hit someone with a Nerf gun, then they have, for the next round, they have to wear ankle weights and weigh oh. themselves down. Dude, that that reminds me of a show that I wish they came brought it back and monetized. Do you guys remember Chase? It no. was a cool game show where the whole point was like they, they were role playing like I'm going to put you in my video game. And the whole point is they would run around giant <laughs> locations like Universal Studios or like the American Mall, like really big real world locations. But they would be chased by agents, people dressed up like Agent Smith from the Matrix. But the way that you'd fight them is you could find like guns and like uh, power ups throughout the fucking map. And like, so you'd find like a stun gun and the agent would be chasing you and they were only allowed to like quickly walk like an agent from the Matrix. And, and like, if you fire the stun gun <laughs> at them, they would just fucking freeze in place. It was really cool. It was a lot of fun. I wish they brought fun. it back. It was a fun little game. I wish adults were allowed to play more games like that. Like we could just go somewhere and play 
mm-hmm. play a game. I have always wanted to do like a big mall full of like adult shit. Not like mm-hmm. pornographic. I, I just mean like fun <laughs> activities for adults is just like a cool hangout spot to do just a bunch of shit. We should rent out a whole so mall cool. and have competitive hide and seek. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. I guess yeah, kind of- it'd be so hard. It'd be so hard to get over that hurdle of like uh, playing hide and seek as an adult, like thinking this is dumb. Being, being like, I don't know. I don't know, yeah, bro, because they have dumb. competitive tag, and that shit is awesome. Oh, fuck. You, have you been watching competitive tag? I watch it every chance I get. It's I, I watch the highlights. Awesome. And I'll say, like, speaking of athletes that aren't douchebags, like, competitive tag players seem like the nicest uh-huh. dudes, because whether yeah, or not they nice. win, they... Every single time, I've not yet seen any of them get angry. At all, like they lose and then they still get up and they like hug their opponent and they're super fucking happy. Well, they got to play tag. I, I really yeah, want to. Yeah. I really want to fucking do it. So I, I want to set the stage a bit because if you just hear it, competitive tag sounds really stupid and lame. But when they do competitive tag, it's in a parkour course. So everything is like bars and pulls and gaps and jumps and like steps and shit. So it's not just they're running around chasing each other. They're doing flips. They're like climbing on stuff. They're like they're swinging human, around. Dude. It's, it's like, fucking awesome. You ever watch like two cats chase each other? That's what it looks like. It's fucking yeah, insane. It's and it's a awesome. lot of fun. And I recommend type in competitive tag um, highlights into YouTube. Yeah. And you get like co- really cool compilations of them doing this. They're and yeah, so, it looks so like it a lot of good. fun. Yeah. God, I'm going to watch yeah, competitive cool. tag right now. I fucking love it. <laughs> it is just parkour. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's parkour. basically it's competitive cool. parkour. Yeah. Whatever happened to parkour? That's like a, I feel like a fad that was really popular at some point on YouTube and then it just went away. I watched a whole video on that, actually. Parkour really? is still pretty pop. Uh, admittedly, admittedly is the wrong word, but parkour is actually still popular. It's just a couple of big channels now. But parkour mm-hmm. had this phase where one guy pretty much had a monopoly on it. I can't remember the dude's name, but he was this bald guy. guy. Bald guy. Oh, it mm. was it the guy in District 13? Because I, I feel like the popularity of parkour rose and died with those movies, the District 13 movies. Maybe. District 13? What the fuck is District 13? Oh, it's a fun movie, dude. You mean the, about... the alien one? No, that's District no, that's 9. District 9. Something. Yeah. No, District 13. That's what it's called. It's a fra- French action film with... What's his fucking face? Luke Besson? Are you thinking of Luke Besson, Charlie? No, wait, sorry, not Luke. No, so, but he started He started a company and they... That's where like that Cyril signature Raffaelli? glyph comes... Maybe. Oh, fuck, no. I, I don't even recognize the name, but he started glyph. Uh, it was a big parkour thing. Let me well, find his David name. Bell was also one of the bigger ones who like pioneered this thing and made it brought it into the mainstream. David Bell and the District Thirteen movies, Jackson. It's literally about so people in France they live under a dystopian regime at that point, and everything is like segregated and the poor people live in slums. But this young one young man is going to topple the governments by doing parkour and. <laughs> like it was easy cops. easy charlie paul corkery <laughs> oh thank you okay God. and it was urban free flow yeah Not yeah urban free flow urban free flow i haven't heard yes. that name in a long yeah, time yeah, yeah, yeah. so he had like a full-blown monopoly on it anyone who was big on parkour joined urban free flow he started mm-hmm. the glyph he started pretty much that uh. whole movement giving parkour like an online presence and pretty much any movies or TV shows, music videos, whatever that needed parkour or artists or anything, they had to go through him. Uh, eventually, what happened is he kind of went off the rails and people just left him. So for a while, he had a stranglehold on it. And then when people were like having this exodus, there was just this period where parkour wasn't as popular anymore because now it wasn't all centralized urban free flow was dying and other places were trying to like get their own hold on the market but they actually credit him like going off the rails to a failed stunt Uh, apparently during one of his parkour attempts he hit his head or something and his whole personality changed and it made him like start to backstab the people in his organization and shit like that sounds like something familiar yeah sounds like cte Yeah, so he, for a while, basically owned parkour online. 
God damn. All the talent was there, and then they all split off once he had had a bit of a change of heart. I'm sorry, but at that point, that's like, you're such a risk seeker, you know, because these guys would put GoPros on themselves and then do backflips on the ledge of a skyscraper. And I'd be watching yeah. this like, you know, no offense, but if you die, you kind of had it coming. <laughs> there's a shockingly low amount of people that do that that die. I always thought it'd be more because there's a lot of videos of people going to those extremely high skyscrapers and doing parkour, doing pull ups, doing one arm pull ups, doing backflips and shit. But very yeah. rarely do they actually die from it. They're just well, so because, good at what they do. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. you have to be a real professional till you like graduate to that level of like stunts. I assume it's like juggling flaming swords. Like if anybody tried that at the novice level, they would lose a bunch of limbs. But professionals can do it. Mm hmm. Parkour looks fucking fun. Parkour has yeah. always looked fun. Parkour is fucking cool. Anyway, competitive tag is basically that, but in a smaller arena. And you get all these guys who kind of, they look dorky. Like, no offense. Yep. They look all lanky and skinny, but they are the fastest fuckers. And I've said this before. If I was, like, making an Ocean's Eleven movie type thing, I would just hire a bunch of those guys and have them rob malts. Because what Paul Blart mall cop could ever <laughs> hope to catch them? <laughs> Man, they should game. They should gamify police chases somehow. Like, have a cop enter the tag arena and try to catch one of the park people. Just shoot them. Be fun. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. He just yelled, well, take, gun, take the gun, "Gun, gun!" and shoot them. <laughs> take the gun off the police officer first. <laughs> I, would, I would assume. Mm. At the end of the chase, he plants marijuana on them. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, should we wrap? <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, we sure. Wrap. Yeah. Sounds good. Thank you, everyone, for listening to episode 275 of the official podcast. There's a Patreon, patreon.com slash the official podcast for bonus episodes. A lot of bonus episodes. We've got about 98 over on our Patreon that you can yeah, go listen to right now. Recording hundreds soon. I think we talked about, yeah, I think we talked about religion in the last one. So oh, go check that oh out. Oh, boy. Good Biblical be. stories. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> go check out what our uninformed opinions on religion are. All right, thank you for listening. We'll see you next week. Bye. 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 -bye. Bye, -bye.